hey, uh, thanks for joining us on the weekly In Wheel Time Car Show. Time now for a look at the car calendar and the racing calendar, and Conrad always has that for us. And I'm going to keep this kind of short. Uh, Klein Band on uh, October 10th at Klein High School is having an event that's a fundraiser for the band. October 25th, Northside Mustang Club is going to have their open car show at the Conroe Outlets. Racing. This is October. October. Okay. Uh, racing. Um, Going on here locally, uh, C.J. Spencer had kind of shared with me to kind of promote, not promote, but to talk about some of the local dirt track stuff that's going on as well. So, you know, there's uh, tonight, it's already been rained out at the uh, Gulf Coast uh, Speedway in <laughs> We're going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> well, just because we're making it short. Well, just to <laughs> let people know that the Cotton Bowl Speedway in Page, the 105 Speedway in Cleveland, the Gulf Coast Speedway in Alvin, and the Texana Speedway in in Edna are all going to have events on the on the first or the eighth as well. So well, Gina's having a big event uh, next weekend. That's going to be on the first, and, and we're keeping our fingers crossed it doesn't rain. Asphalt racing at its best out at Houston Motorsports Park. There'll be social distancing and masks, but you come on out. And it's local NASCAR, not national NASCAR. Correct. So definitely come on out and support it. Okay, and uh, that's the racing calendar. Do we have the car calendar, or did you do that? I already, already did. Oh, you kind of melded it all in there together. All right. You told me to keep it short, well, I, I never did. do. Well, I'm trying to make it longer, apparently. Okay, <laughs> we're going to have more of uh, Ashton Munoz right after a quick break here on the In Wheel Time Show. It's 4 a.m., Monday, and you're literally sucking baby snot through a tube because she's congested. Man, that's love. And if you love her that much, love her enough to make sure she's buckled in the right car seat. To make sure your child's in the right seat for their age and size, visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Is your business or company looking to stand out in a crowded advertising market? Looking to reach the real auto enthusiast? You found it. You're listening or watching In Wheel Time, and so are your fellow enthusiasts. The In Wheel Time Car Show now reaches half a million, and we can put together a marketing plan that will engage them in your product, business, or service. To get the tires rolling, just shoot us an email to our marketing director, Jeff Zekin. His address is jeff at inwheeltime.com. Howdy, and this is your weekly go-to award-winning car talk show in wheel time. Today is Dodge Day. This segment, we delve into the performance pages of many of Dodge's hot rods. We also have our Jeep Trails feature and peek into this week's Mystery Garage, plus the stories making automotive news headlines. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Bars, and King Conrad DeLong. Don Armstrong here, so glad that you could join us. And speaking of joining us, once again, Ashton Munoz from not quite the UP of Michigan, but he says he's close. And we're kind of jealous because the weather here is kind of ugly today. But Ashton, thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate it. So this hour, we're going to talk about the performance pages. And if people aren't familiar with uh, the Dodge brand and the Uconnect system, the performance pages, how would you describe the performance pages? Well, if Donald Potch, uh, no, hold I'm, on a second. I've got him up. Um, it, 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 hold on, hold on, Ashton. Um, you guys can, can nah. There you are. There you are. That was Mr. Okay, Mars' okay. issue over there. Um, so the performance pages is really, uh, it's almost like a dashboard on how to control, um, see all the settings going on with your car. Um, I mean, and it has everything from, uh, you know, race features to driving settings from your steering wheel, suspension, um, all the way to gauges. So I believe last time we went through the gauges section. Right. And there was. There was, uh, I, I think we may have talked briefly on drive modes, and then there were a, a bunch of other race features I wanted to cover with you guys, and that's what I was talking about earlier, um, battling heat. There's a bunch of really cool features in the performance pages um, and all the race options that we, you know, battle heat with. So if you don't mind, let, let's, let's start with um, exactly how you get to the performance pages. It's relatively simple, isn't it? Relatively simple. Um, on the SRT vehicles, you'll see a little button that says drive modes. And you press drive modes, and it brings you up into a screen. And I actually can show that again. Um, I have a few more screens if you want me to. We certainly Please. do. Please do. All right. Let me pull that up for you guys. All 
far right. So if you see here, um, sorry about that. Um, so this is the drive mode screen. So if you click on the drive modes button, it'll pull you up here. Um, it'll pull you to a dashboard as well too. And then you can get into this drive mode and then actually change um, a lot of different uh, features of the vehicle. So anything from power um, on the Hellcats, you can dial it back to 500. It seems crazy to say dial it back to 500. Um, well, let me ask but, you this. Why would you dial it back to 500? Well, so uh, in, a, in a lot of the times we actually see these cars, they're daily driver cars. People have these, uh, they, especially the Charger, uh, people are using them with their families. Let's say if, uh, you know, you have a young child that's just learning to drive a car, um, maybe you don't want them to have the full 700. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's dial them back <laughs> to 500 and teach them how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> you have a 200 mark in there somewhere <laughs> but when you yeah. but when you dial back the power let's just say yeah. from 800 to 500 does that change yeah. any of the other other settings on it does it give it more a fuel economy besides uh, giving it less power yeah so there's a, a lot of things that happen um, all the all the features change when you dial it back and we also have an eco mode so obviously you dial the power back from 800. Uh, the fuel mapping's different, so you're not using as much fuel on every press of the gas or every time you stomp on the pedal. Um, and then with eco mode, that actually dials it down, not the horsepower, but that just puts the car into a mode where you're basically telling it, hey, I want to get the best fuel economy possible. So, and, and there's a huge difference too. If you put it on track mode, tap the gas, I mean, you hear the tires chirp. If you put it on auto mode with eco on, Tap the gas. It's it feels just like an everyday sedan that you you know take up north and uh, let your your 16, 17 year old uh, daughter or son drive. Is the fuel saving significant when you put it in the eco mode? It would be it really for me. is, it, and and I can I can I can have more experience actually on the um, the five seven and the scat packs that we offer. They're really cool. Um, on all we actually on both of those engines we offer a a, a fuel saving mode. So basically, it turns the V8 into a four-cylinder. Um, it uses the unused cylinders as kind of air um, air brakes, and the car goes into a four-cylinder mode, which significantly saves fuel. Well, I think that that's very significant in itself. I mean, we always talk about these cars, the SRT brands of cars, uh, and, and we always talk about the high horsepower. But, you know, for many, many, many buyers uh, and people that, that actually have these as the family car and commute back and forth to work. And in Houston, really, we commute here on an average of at least 20 miles a day. Uh, overall, uh, and some even further than that. I know at one time I commuted uh, 50 miles uh, to work one way. And so when you're commuting, you don't need the 800 horsepower. You know, uh, it, it, going down the Hardy Toll Road, you're going to probably do 70 miles an hour, maybe 80 miles an hour. But I'd rather do that in the eco mode as opposed to the full range of 800 horsepower and all the things that it'll do. Yes, and, it, and it's cool, too, because you can switch it right on the fly. So let's say, I mean, I'll, I'll use a real-world example. On my way up north this week, um, you know, on the highway, I just had it in auto mode. It was, it was running on four cylinders on the scat pack. Um, and then, you know, when we got off the highway and got to some of the more twisty roads, uh, you know, I put it in sport or even track, and you can hear the exhaust kind of uh, be louder, the traction's less, the suspension's stiffer, the the steering wheel stiffer, um, and it just feels tighter and louder, and everything's more instant. But it's awesome because it really is right on the fly. It's, it's that, more it's really badassier. Like <laughs> yes, but yes. it's but it's a fully integrated change as you change between each of those modes. It's not just the output of the engine; it's fully integrating everything: yeah. transmission, suspension, brakes, paddle shifters, steering, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. And then you can also customize it. So I like, uh, you know, I joke around about my Detroit mode. I always put it in, but that's basically, you know, all full power, but plan for potholes in the road. So put the suspension <laughs> on the street. <laughs> potholes and those iron plates they cover the potholes with. Yeah, see, yeah. See, I like that, though, because, see, you could, you could run it with the full 700, 800 horsepower to enter the freeway. 
You oh can get up God. to that 70 Gross. miles an hour really, really quick and then kick it over into your eco mode so that you can save Pay no fuel. attention to him, Ashton, because here's a guy that has a glove box that's full of unpaid tickets for speeding and doing <laughs> reckless things on the freeway with your cars. <laughs> I didn't hear that. <laughs> no, I didn't say it either. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So uh, let's continue on with the performance pages. So we know that we can yeah. dial back the power, but there's other features as well. That's right. So this kind of whole list, I'll, I'll go down with it. It's a bunch of really cool options and features on these cars. So line lock. Um, I'm sure everybody knows what line lock is, but if there's anybody listening that doesn't, um, it's basically the newest way to heat up your rear tires, clean them up before you go drag racing. Um, you know, back in the day, and, and I'm sure we've done this how many, you can't even count how many times we've done it, but a little brake torque. So you hit the brake, hit the gas, spin the brake, break the back tires loose. But the only bad thing, obviously, is you're wasting um, rear rotor when you do that, when you overcome it. And you're heating up the rotor and, and all that, too. So with this, obviously, uh, lock the front brakes. It's all electronic. You can heat up the rears, clean off your tires and then uh, line up for staging. Heat, heat up the rears. Notice he doesn't say do a smoke show, right? <laughs> it's just heating up the rear tires. Or a burn down. He doesn't say that. He doesn't use those words because he is a factory guy, and, you know, he knows those he's words. He's just but heating up the tires. He's just heating up the tires and getting more traction yeah. on there. Yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Making the um, sticky so that's one. So a line lock is standard on our scat packs and above. So scat pack, Hellcat, Red Eye. Uh, super stock, those will all come standard with a line lock. Um, another one is launch control. So this one's very useful. And I and you guys know too this this probably better than anybody, but um, one thing that we try to do is consistency for these cars in drag racing. Drag racing is super fun um, for you know pros and amateurs, but one of the things that makes it even more fun is when you can get, get consistent times. Um, so you can do the launch control. You can set your RPMs depending on, you know, what wheels and tires you have on the car, how prepped the track is, or if it's prepped at all. Um, obviously, the higher you set it, um, the, the more grip you'll have to have to get that launch. But you can dial it in and out um, through this launch control setting. Does it, does it, when you do the launch control setting, does it also uh, actually, does it keep it, from not rolling through the staging lights? I mean, how does that work? You have yeah, to so, so, you'll, uh, so you'll pull up the, the drive modes button. You'll get into the launch control setting on here. You'll activate it, and then it's all through the screen. So it'll basically tell you to press the gas and the brake simultaneously and at the same time. You'll be doing that, and as you're doing that, um, air will be going through the engine, your front brakes will be held, and as soon as you let off that brake, it then activates everything in the engine, and then you're off. All, all hell breaks loose is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Couldn't have said it better. Wow. Well, so so it's really – none of that stuff that I actually went through when trying to drive that six-cylinder and keep the tires from lighting up in the back end at the drag strip on a Friday night. No. We're just making it easier and easier for everybody nowadays. Well, I mean, that's what it's all about, and why not? Because if you've got the computer uh, know-how to do yeah. all of this stuff, and it really doesn't take a lot of knowledge to do it. I mean, it's pretty easy the way that it's all set up. Yeah, it's all in there, so it's like why not take advantage of the, the cool technology that we have and, and actually offer it to the customers and owners for, for them to be able to control. Well, well you're not well, going to – I'm going to go ahead. And, and that's when you're talking about the consistency because this truly is what makes these muscle cars by the – oldest definition there is you can drive it all week long take it out to the yep. track and you can be consistent and you can be competitive with these vehicles using these tools at the track and ashton i have to uh, add on to that the fact that you know we always talk about the red eye the hellcat all the new 800 horsepower and all that sort of stuff yeah. but i have to tell you that i think that my favorite car of all is the 392 scat pack the the normally aspirated engine it's got Plenty of horsepower, and it's more affordable, obviously, than the uh, supercharged uh, versions of it. And um, it's just my preference. Plus, you can also get a manual transmission in it. So I totally agree with you uh, personally, and all of our customers seem to agree with you as well. Um, right now on the Charger and the Challenger, our scat pack has it's been shooting up. It's, it's one of our most popular models. 
Um, and I think just obviously you said the price, uh, the value, it's you know, right around $40,000. And to get near 500 horsepower for four, around $40,000 is uh, right in the bread and butter in the sweet spot of the whole muscle car industry right now. What, well, are, what is the warranty on these cars? Uh, 30, three years, 36. Three and 36, okay. And, the, yeah. and, the, <laughs> a, and a quarter the... mile at a time. It'll last a little <laughs> while. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny too, because um, you know we we you you mentioned this uh, about consistency and learning. You first you hear all these features, and you at first you think, oh, there's a bunch of nannies to you know to help people get faster times. They actually are a really good tool to help the driver uh, learn how to go faster. And and that's also supported by your non-street version challengers that you sell. Because when you look at some of the track events, and now they're doing a pure stock version of the Challenger in the NHRA, they have their own class where they race against the Mustangs, the Camaros, and the Challengers. And uh, you guys have um, oh, what's what's her what's her name from uh, races for Prudhomme? The the girl. Well, <laughs> I, her, yeah, her. My, my brain just went empty. But and, and actually, she's been extremely successful. So you're actually bringing what you learn on the track to the street through your mm-hmm. uh, your uh, NHRA events with the Challenger mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, um, and then I don't want to. I, I definitely want to get to a few other. Uh, there's a really cool ch- uh, power chiller too that we haven't talked about yet. Let's so do it. We got about two ahead. minutes to go. All right, so this one's really cool. I can finally talk about it now for Charger. So we have it now for the Charger Red Eye for 21 model year. This first came out uh, with the Demon, and it's the only kind of feature in the industry right now. Uh, But basically, in track mode on our Red Eye, so our Challenger Red Eye, our Charger Red Eye, and the uh, Challenger Superstock, we have a power chiller. So it basically takes your air conditioning, refrigerant, and coolant, cycles it through the radiator, cycles it through a chiller unit that's that's chilled by the air conditioner refrigerant, and then cycles it back into the supercharger cooler. Ah! Oh, my Ooh. gosh. I don't have to pack it with dry ice uh, anymore? Yeah, it's a high-tech cool can. <laughs> exactly. So so we, we literally cool down the supercharger with the AC unit in track mode on the red eyes um, to get even more cooling and performance out of these – 800 horsepower model because the colder the air the more dense it is the more oxygen there's available throw fuel at it and make it go bang so you know what exactly. you're telling me here is is that you've got 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 some guys over there in the engineering department the engine engineering department that yep. uh, obviously have done some naughty things in their earlier <laughs> life uh, as, not, i don't know not, not necessarily the street but certainly on the drag strip Oh yeah, and, and, and oh yeah. I mean, we're, we're lucky. We're lucky. We get to, we get to work with the best engineers, and and it's it's funny going to work is like um, it, it's just something that we love to do. We love working on these cars. We are car people, so it's just as much of a joy to make these cars and, and do these cool features and technology. It is you know, to offer it even to the customer. Well, Ashton, it's great to talk to you as always with Dodge. And uh, we really appreciate the, all of the, all of the knowledge that you've brought to our show today, not only with the Dodge brand, but also with the performance pages in the Uconnect system. It's great to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us. And we hope to see you again and talk to you again soon. Anytime. Thank you guys very much for having us. Thank you, my friend. We'll talk to you again soon. Time now for a Jeep Trails feature in Wheel Time's weekly look into the world of Jeeping. And Mr. Mars has that for us. It's a tough act to follow him. So, you know, one of the things that we were looking at um, with the Jeep, the Jeep lifestyle, it's all about the great outdoors and things like that. So people, now that we're in this kind of a pandemic thing, I've kind of noticed some people, they're taking advantage of that kind of quietly, but you know, you go to some of these campgrounds, you get into the outdoors, RVing, things like that. And one of the things you can do if you go to Jeep.com and you go into Jeep Lifestyle, and we've talked about this before, but there's a section there called the Badge of Honor. And it's really designed. They've out, laid out some tracks or, or some courses across the country that you can go, take your Jeep and go to. But you could also take it a step further. That could also be a guide. If I mean, if you're wanting to go RVing and be in the outdoors with you and your family, kind of social distance but still be out in the sunshine you could use that as a guide if even if you're not full on into the jeep off-roading okay. so jeep.com and uh it's called the badge of honor yeah. and you can put the app on your phone
Thank you very much, sir. All right, uh, this week in automotive history and inside the mystery garage, coming up next here on the In Wheel Time Car Show. When might you be buzzed? When you suddenly love everything. You guys, I love this song. I love these nachos. I love our kickball league. Oh, I love this guy. What's your name? You know what I love? A ride when it's time to head out. If you see a buzzed warning sign, call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. I love your car. Is this real leather? A social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part, because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. <laughs> it's your All Things Automotive Weekly Car Talk Show. In Wheel Time, a reminder that we are live on the In Wheel Time website, on YouTube, and Facebook each and every Saturday, 10 a.m. to noon Central Time. And we thank you for riding with us today. Time now for Inside the Mystery Garage, which, by the way, is that this, this, this area back here. Can you see it right back here? See, back here? That's the Mystery Garage. Okay, because we are in Studio A, which is actually sitting in front of the Mystery Garage. And today's Mystery Garage is a little bit something different, I thought, that I would bring to you. Because, you know, we've always talked about redoing your garage. And um, and I thought, well, you know, let's go a little different and, and fantasize just a moment. This is a real garage. Um, uh, clearly, this man um, has means with which to with which to uh, outfit his garage. Full the, of Ferraris. And there's a glass partition. I don't know whether you can see it there, but there's a glass partition between the man cave, which is in the foreground here. And uh, he obviously is a Ferrari man because you can see the, the uh, Ferrari logo there on the cushions uh, in the foreground. And um, there's a bar back there, and there's places to store your glasses and a nice refrigerator. And then you go back to the business part of it, if you really want to call it that, because he's got a elevator there for the red, see the red Ferrari that's mm -hmm. facing away? That's an elevator, so it lowers down into the floor and allows for more space to have... Your just, mechanics to come in and work on the cars that you own. Just a man of means. Well, he's got an Aston Martin sitting right there, that orange car. Yeah. That's pretty. But, but you'll notice that, that where, where the red Ferrari is in that cage-looking thing, that is an elevator. So imagine that lowers down into the floor and allows To the more... other parking garage. That's the one where you just want to stash the trash and bring the pretty cars up top. That's where <laughs> the guys that are under your employ that take care of your cars, that's where they work on them. And when they finish them, they put them in the lift and bring them back up in, to the show level. In the lift. I in like the that. lift. I like that. Yes. That, well, you would call it an elevator if you want to. But um, I have to tell you that there clearly are two doors that uh, are inside the garage there. One in the back, in the very back of the wall. And there's another one over to the left-hand side that you can't see uh, where the other cars are parked over here. So there are multiple entrances and exits to the garage. And I bet you this guy has most of his cars insured with Haggerty, right? Because Angelica just joined us online. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I, well, no, they're, they're not 20 years old, but they are collector cars. But um, I would imagine that insurance is probably not an issue for this man. No. Or a woman. No, no. I don't know. It could be a woman. Instead of a man cave, it could be a woman cave. A car cave. A car cave, right. So invite the she friends. Of, uh huh. A she shed. I like that. Cheryl, she said. That's right. Well, well, that one burned down, remember? But at any rate, um, I, I just wanted to, to show you an example of how the other side can that's, live. That's a beautiful what other side be. as well. I want to remind you that if you're a member of a car, truck, or Jeep club, we'd love to put your bunch in our car club spotlight. And all you have to do is shoot us an email with the contact information to info at inwheeltime.com. We'll get that, and we'll put your bunch in the car club spotlight. Time now for This Week in Automotive History, and Conrad has that for us. Well, 
1903, the first Ford Model A, which, I remember that, which was before, <laughs> which was before the Model T, uh-huh. was delivered to uh, Ernest Fenning of Chicago, Illinois, and we're going to bring that Model A back, which they only made for two years. Any relationship to Ernest T? Yes, Ernest T. But the Model A has a relationship with Dodge as well, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, in 1904, Louis Rigoli drove a 15 liter uh, Brill car. To, Brill. Brill. Uh huh. To in Belgium to over 100 miles an hour. In Is 19- that where they got Brill cream from? Brill cream. In, 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 uh, you don't need Brill cream. You need hair, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> but can you imagine going 100 miles an hour in 1904 with those big, tall wheels and no seat belts and no, probably no windshield? If I were no 16 helmet. or 18, yes, I could. And then also in 1911, General Motors organized GMC Truck Company uh, to handle the sales of GM's Rapid Reliance products. So GMC goes back that far. In 1941, the American automaker uh, Henry Ford writes a letter to the Indian of India, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, praising him on his uh, civil disobedience aimed at forcing the British colonial government out of India. Uh, Henry Ford was quite a, uh, uh, he, he had a very political position on a lot of things. Some things were agreed with by the American government. So he's the weren't. one that's responsible for when I call Sears that I get somebody over there on the other end of the line. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, just In saying. 1987, Enzo Ferrari commemorated Ferrari's 40th anniversary by unveiling the Ferrari F40, which was the first production car. It had a 2.9-liter two, turbo V8. What's the significance of 40? Here yeah. we go with the fours again, the 400, the 40. Well, the 40 was his 40th anniversary of Ferrari. Oh, I see. Okay. So, you know, Ferrari started in 1947, and in 1987, that would be 40, 40 years. years later. Mm. But that was also the first uh, production car to break the 200-mile-an-hour barrier. And then in 1998... Uh, the U.S. 500, uh, the championship uh, auto racing series, what is currently known as IndyCar, uh, had a pretty tragic event where some spectators were, were killed in an event. And it brought more, every time something like this happens, it brings more and more safety innovations to the automotive uh, uh, motorsports uh, field. And that's when they really started putting the catch fences up much higher threading the uh, the one-inch cable through the catch fences. They leaned the catch fences over the racetrack again so stuff wouldn't get, uh, get off the car and up into the audience. And then the other thing is now you look at a lot of these uh, open-wheel racers, they actually tether components of the car yes. so they don't release and get up into the audience. So e- even though it was a tragic situation, uh, the outcome of it's been pretty good for the future. Thank you, sir. This week's Auto News is next on the In Wheel Time Car Show. Stick with us. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions. Don't text and drive. Visit stoptextstoprex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Texas Truck Works is your go-to truck customizer. From mild-to-wild lift kits, custom wheels and steering and handling enhancements, to the best personal and commercial wraps, Texas Truck Works delivers. Let Texas Truck Works founder Scott Stevens help you get the most out of your truck or Jeep. Texas Truck Works has decades of customizing experience, including power adders and complete engine swaps. Let the Texas Truck Works team design an upgrade plan that fits your budget. Get Truck Attitude today at TexasTruckWorks.com. You're on the In Wheel Time Car Show. Thanks for riding along. Time now for the stories making auto news headlines this week. And we start with great news. Tesla is the big winner in the sweepstakes. Texas is Texas the winner. Texas is the big winner. Uh-huh. In the sweepstakes to land Tesla's next gigafactory. CEO Elon Musk, speaking on the company's second quarter earnings call Wednesday, said construction began this past weekend, a week ago, on the 2,000-acre site outside of Austin along the Colorado River that sits about five minutes away from the Austin airport. Musk said, the location will be open to the public and is basically going to be an ecological paradise, no doubt. The site will build Tesla's Cybertruck pickup and semi-truck. 
along. Have you seen the semi truck? Mm-hmm. Along with the Model Three sedan and the Model Y crossover. Goodbye, California, nanny, nanny, boo, boo. Stick your head in. Do do. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Rivian. Rivian said Friday expects to begin delivering a battery electric pickup and battery electric SUV to customers starting in one year next summer. The R1T pickup will arrive first in June. The R1S utility vehicle is scheduled to roll off the line in August of 2021. Rivian, backed by Ford, Cox Automotive, Amazon, and others, began assembling vehicles on a pilot production line this week. And think about how many of those they're going to sell to Amazon to deliver to your house soon. Yeah, like the next day. Order it online and we'll send it right over. No problem. No problem whatsoever. Well, they'll be replacing all those Mercedes Sprinter vans with a Rivian. Yep, exactly. Um, here's a Cadillac story that I know that uh, I, I teased earlier when I went on a rant about the uh, review of the CT6 that I had. You're such a tease. <clears throat> it's no coincidence that the names of two upcoming Cadillacs, the Lyric. Lyric. Uh-huh, Lyric. And that's spelled L I. L-Y. And I'm sorry, L Y R I Q and the Celestique, C E L E S T I Q, end with the same two letters. The brand plans to give all the vehicles in its pipeline names that end with I Q. Finally, somebody at General Motors has an <laughs> I Q. I worked there for 25 years and I looked for them. I thought I was the only one there, along with a few friends of mine with an I Q at GM. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they doing this? Because they are transitioning from internal combustion engines to electric. Electric. Full electric. Full electric. God help us all. <laughs> uh, they're going to have to do something with the press fleet because I won't accept one that's got a 110-volt charger ever again in my entire life. Done with that. You're going to give me the card that I could take it up there to the Whole Foods market and plug it in. Not, I'm not doing 110. Because it be, never charges. But you'll be sitting out in front of Whole Foods for an hour and a half. Well, I don't care about that. That's next week's show. Then it's a 30 minutes is all yeah. I need. Yeah. Okay, so uh, there's that <laughs> to look forward to. The IQ. The IQ. I, uh, you know, you, you hear but, a, but will Don turn one down when they give him one to drive? You no, hear about you hear about these grumpy it. old men. Well, there's three of us sitting right here. Four <laughs> of us sitting right you here. You found one, and uh, you know you're having to pull me through all of this. Okay, well that's it for this hour of, uh, of in real time. We've got more of our show following this quick. 